573 Godzilla on the dyno and today we're going to do a couple cam swaps to show you the differences between just a couple of the different camshafts that Brian's been r and So Brian, what's going to happen today? Yeah, what we want to do today is uh, we, we did a new cam that's just a slight tweak to our kind of our go-to cam that we like with our call it 600 horsepower, 600 foot-pound combination. Right. So what we want to do is a back-to-back -back on the same day uh, to get those environmental conditions as close as possible so the correction factor doesn't really play into it. We're trying to get the A to B with that camshaft. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is just what you do in the car. We're going to take the cooling system off. Uh, we're going to get the water drained out normally and then we're going to drain water out of the block on both sides. It makes it a lot cleaner. We're going to be taking the EGTs off both sides, taking the spark plug wires off, uh, getting ready to take the valve covers off. We don't have to worry about taking intake manifold off, fuel system, all that stays on when we go to it. So uh, this will go pretty quick. Um, then we're going to be pulling the damper off, the front cover off, timing system will come out, camshaft will come out, new camshaft will go in, and we'll go through all the little idiosyncrasies of that. Some things are a lot easier to do if you just uh, take a little bit of time and think about it. Water out of the block. Okay, one of the things to know too is while you see us using those uh, electric impacts to take things off like valve covers, critical components like spark plugs, never do we use an electric tool. It's always by hand, so if something just goes off a little bit, you can feel it before you strip anything. Real important when you work on engines. I know most of you already know that, but I just didn't want you to think we use power tools to unzip and zip things back together. All right, now that we got the water drained out of the block, the reason we do that is because when we pull that front cover off, if we don't take the water out of the block, we'll haul the water at the top of the block so you go into the oil, so, which is a mess. Okay, as you can see, what Josh is doing is he's laying this valve train out in the exact order it's coming out because you want to really put everything back the way it came. So we always clean this cart before we start a new uh, swap so everything's clean. We're taking clean parts out, putting it on a clean cart, putting clean parts back in, putting them back in in the same order they came out. And also, you'll know, pay attention to what side went against the rock arm, what side went against the lifter. So everything goes the way it came out. That way, if there's any burnishing or wearing in, everything's already mated and you're not doing that a second time. Okay, we're going to pull the damper off so we can take the front cover off and swap the cam. Um, obviously on the dyno I can lock the flywheel, but uh, if you're doing this in a vehicle you'll need a tool that you can take the starter off and lock the flywheel in place so you can uh, take the damper off. This is just real inexpensive, we got it from MMR online, you probably need one if you're going to be doing work like this. Alrighty, so we got to loosen this damper bolt, it's torqued to 125 foot-pounds plus another 180 degrees, lots of torque on it. So when I was like 18, 19, I would have used a ratchet like this to do it. And then when I got 40s, I needed a, a pry bar like this to do it. And now that I'm in my 60s, I need a little bit more leverage to get this thing loose. Alright, now that the cover is out of the way, you can see the advantage of taking the water out of the block. So these are coolant passages here, so no water drained into the pan, not much, no mess to clean up. So now we're going to take the oil pump drive off, the chain tensioner, chain guide, uh, take off the uh, cam drive or the VCT unit, and uh, take these three fasteners out, which is a thrust plate, take the cam out, new cam in, and away we're going to go.
All right, so what'd you do there, Brian, with the uh, tensioner? Yeah, the tensioner obviously is uh, fed with oil from the block. So I had to do, you know, it was extended to guide the, to tension the chain. So we just had to squeeze that, let the oil come out of it. And then we put this little, uh, not little, but this Allen uh, wrench in so that it holds it in place. I like using something long because if you use something very short and you get distracted and leave that in, then you have no chain tension, so bad. Yeah, the reason I'm rotating the motor over is to get the timing marks roughly where they're supposed to be, mainly for the crankshaft. Uh, so when I slide the new cam in, um, everything will be already be in place for me. So there's a mark on the cam sh shaft, which I'll show you here shortly as it comes around. So this timing mark here, and then there's a mark also on the crankshaft sprocket that we use to align. When we put it together, we'll see that in more detail. Okay, so what we're doing here, we have a special sprocket that you can get your Ford dealer, and that's to take the cam bolt out, which is also the spool valve for the VCT. So it has a special pattern on it. They're not a uh, hex pattern, it's more of a spline. And then this other part holds the VCT unit in place, so you're not loading the VCT, you're not loading the chain. Okay, so what we're going to do is I do rotate this, the cam around and what that does is it pushes all the lifters to the top and because it has a little plastic tray that holds it in place uh, like most late model engines do uh, that gets them out of the place so that we, we can get the camshaft out. Now this is really cool. My friend uh, Dave Zimmerman's guys made this up for me. This is just a stock spool valve and then because again I'm a frail old man I needed something to get some leverage. So this allows me to get the cam in and out easily, not scoring the cam bearings, not knocking, knocking lifters out of place. Got our cam all ready and lubed up and ready to slide her in. All right, Brian, when you're uh, installing the cam, what are you looking for here? Gentle. It wants to be very gentle because it likes it better that way. And it's gentle going in. And you want to make sure you don't hit anything that's not supposed to <laughs> hit. So what I'm doing here first is I'm getting the cam pre-positioned like we did the crankshaft. So that dot is roughly where it's supposed to be. Timing chain, two, two marks on it. One single, one double. So the single mark gets lined up with that dot like that. And then the double gets lined up on both sides of this slot down here. And then you've got to feel just to make sure you get it seated on the cam in the slot. Otherwise, it'll be cattywampus, be sideways, and you'll be in big trouble. So you just got to make sure that that does sit flush back to where it's supposed to be and you're turning the cam. Okay, so what we're doing now is you saw us put the uh, sprocket back on, so now we're going to torque that. The procedure is a little bit unique. You use the same tools that you got from your dealer to loosen it as to hold it in place while you're torquing it. So the first thing you do is you tighten it pretty snug so that you know that that thing is sitting flush. 
Then you back it off so it's loose, torque it to 55 newton meters, and then add about another 30 to 35 degrees. And then check it again with the torque wrench because you want to make sure that that reading of actual torque on the bolt is somewhere not less than 100 newton meters and not more than 180. Uh, so if you're in that range, you're within the factory spec. Okay, so even these fasteners are torqued to yield, so I torque them to 10 newton meters first and then another 45 degrees. Um, I like to do it where I do them all at once, so I just snug them up, then I torque them all to 10 newton meters, and then I give them the extra 45. Once that's all that's done, everything's snug, pull the pin, tensioner's back in place, ready to put the front cover back on after you put the oil, hook up the oil pump. All right, so again, we have everything back together. We hooked up the oil pump and chain drive. Sometimes it takes a couple minutes just to get it over the teeth, but it will go over. You don't have to worry about dropping the oil pan, the oil pump, none of that. It will go over the sprocket. Tensioner will take the slack out. So uh, that's all there is to it. We're gonna put some RTV on the front cover and on the sledge here, slap this back together, and uh, probably within a half hour, 40 minutes, we should be making some heat. Okay. So we're going to set the front cover on. We have the RTV on the thin part of the cover, and then you put it on the thin part where the oil pan is, so the wide flange is what it seals against. Uh, nothing special other than there's R2 dowels for alignment, so I want to like make sure those are aligned before I put the fasteners in. And I like to put these long bolts in first. Don't forget these long bolts when you take it apart and try to take the front cover off or oh, you have a very bad day. All right, now something that can happen, and it didn't happen in this case, but it could. And to be frank, I didn't know before I did the first cam swap what would happen to the lifters if they would stay up, if they would start to slide down, what would happen? So a good friend of mine, Dave Jarvis, made me 16 of these bad ass magnesium rods that he tapped the end of it. We put magnets on the end and you can slide that down the push rod hole and you can pull that lifter up. So if you do have one that slides down, either taking it out, you run into a problem or putting it back in, you could make something like this or you could even go to Harbor Freight and get one of their little pencil magnets. But Dave made me a nice match set of 16 of these things, and I just think they're really cool because they're magnesium, and they're shiny, and I like them. Okay, so we torqued this to 175 newton meters. Now we have to add 150 degrees of angle. Okay, so front end's on, uh, valve train's on, we're putting the front covers, the valve covers on, uh, gonna torque those up, put on the coils, plug the spark plug wires in, and we're gonna see how this cam does. We showed you a cam swap on the 7.3 Godzilla, ported heads, uh, two different camshafts, just about 600 horsepower using a stock throttle body, stock bottom end on the motor, stock intake.
Brian, give us a little more details about the results. Okay, so today the big goal was to show how easy it is to do a cam swap on one of these engines. You need a couple special tools to hold that camshaft. Other than that, very straightforward. The other thing we did is we wanted to do a little bit more refinement of our camshafts. So we did, we narrowed up the lobe centers a little bit more to see what type of results we're going to get with this package. And we actually did receive some pretty good results. We picked up about 10 foot-pounds of torque below 5,000 RPM. And on a day like today where we were able to run that back to back and we had a very, very different weather conditions than normal here in Michigan. So with the correction factor, we might not have known if that was real or not, but running those on the same day with the same barometer, same grains of moisture in the air, give us confidence that that difference we saw is real and we can go with that. Yeah, so that's it, man. Great day up here on the dyno. Got to thank everybody for checking out our 7.3 videos, for all the comments, all the likes. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We got a lot more cool stuff coming, so stay tuned.